Welcome to Plank of the Week, the one place where you know you're going to get told who has been the biggest idiot or plank of this particular week. I'm delighted to say, for the first time, I've got Daisy McAndrew here. Who's, I can't believe you just told me you've never been here before. I'm ready to get stuck Excellent. in. Excellent. Well, I don't know why. <laughs> it's been somebody's fault that we've never booked Daisy McAndrew before. But here she is anyway. She's on every night, 10 o'clock, and sometimes on the talk as well. Richard Taylor is also here, fresh from his appearance on the Independent Republic. Very nice to see you. Thank you for coming up from uh, Welsh Wales. Uh, as you say, Welsh. Welsh Wales, Welsh Wales was it, like oh, yeah. it. Oh, no... Always a pleasure, never, never a pressure. Well, it would have been a, a, not a pleasure if it was the RMT <laughs> Welsh right going on. But, um, anyway, let's get on the way. Uh, since you're the first person uh, to have been here for the first time, let's have your first plank. Right, so I really have wanted to get this off my chest for a number of days. I yes. mean, to take you back to last week when we got the news that Dame Deborah James had died. Yes. Of course, done this amazing work, campaigning work, cancer research. Mm. I think she's now raised more than £10 million. I think pounds. So, yeah. On the day she died, I was going home after my show and I was looking at Twitter mm. and OK Magazine tweeted a story saying, uh, just as she got her cancer diagnosis, Dame Deborah James and husband uh, had been going, their marriage had been going through the rocks and they reconciled. And I thought, what a bloody inappropriate, mm. insensitive, horrible story yeah. to run on the day that this amazing woman had died. She had been very honest about it, that her marriage had been on the rocks yeah. and then had talked about how the cancer brought them together mm. again and they'd you know, been very, very happy. Yeah. Two teenage kids, is that what they want to read on the day that their mum has died? So I was absolutely livid and said, you know, as a journalist, not, yeah. not well, did they in my name. Or did they just leave it no, out there? it was just left out. And, and, of course, we all know that is for money. Yeah. That is for yeah. clickbait. They yeah. knew that people would click on it because people wanted to read about yeah. Deborah James just as she was in the headlines mm. and they would sell advertising off it. I mean, yeah. it's literally profiting from a dead woman and yes. her grieving family. But not doing it in a sort of way that other, well, obviously newspapers would have covered the story, but in a different way, as a kind of, you know, tribute to her or something like as that. As a right? tribute to her, yeah. but that was it. It was just a tweet about how her marriage had been on the rocks. Mm. And I thought, that's really past the sick bucket. Yeah, that is horrible. Most media covered it in a great way, didn't they? They talked about how much she contributed how much you raised for charity, yeah. for cancer research, all that kind of things. But exactly. not much, much that. that was really yeah. insensitive. It really right. was insensitive. Because it a lot of people were calling like us to say uh, all day to say, you know, how because of her they had gone and got themselves checked because yeah. she had because not only had she raised all this money, she'd raised awareness for people to think, well, blimey, I better, she's so young, well, exactly. I better I go mean, and check myself guys, out. Guys, read the room. You know, mm. People wanted to celebrate this woman and wanted to send condolences to her family. Not muckrake about yeah. you know, problems in her marriage. I just thought it was really... Yeah. And it was embarrassing as a journalist. Yes. I thought, that's not journalism. That's not... It's, uh, I, I'm with you with that. Well, when, that's when, the OK we, magazine, isn't it? It's not yeah. journalism, is it? <laughs> well, that's the thing. I mean, when, when, when other journalists do things that you find you know, reprehensible, it's difficult, isn't it? Because you go, that's really not helping. Yeah, you're not in my name. No. You know, I, I don't want to yeah. be associated with that no. type of journalism. It was exactly. really horrible. So I'm very glad to have had the Good. chance to get it off my chest Excellent. and well, put I don't the think, boot in. Yeah, I don't think OK Magazine's been in Plank of the Week before, so it's no. the first time for them as well. It's the first um, time. Richard, who have you well, got? Well, mine's got to be Keir Starmer, of course. He is now, <laughs> Keir Starmer is now the saviour of Brexit. Isn't he? Boris Johnson was get Brexit done. Yeah. Keir Starmer is, I'll make Brexit work. Yes. This is a guy who voted 48 times against <laughs> Brexit, wanted a second referendum, yeah. and he's trying to win the Red Wall of the North, trying to say to them, listen, trust in me, you know, yeah. I will get us through the next election. I'm going to be your next Prime Minister because I'm not going to sign up the single market, you know, I'm not going to get this back in the EU. Yeah. But we all know the guy is trying to play the game. We right. know what's going on. It's a political statement. But also, I don't understand else. what it is that he's saying he's going to do. What is he going to do well, to well, do it well, better? I don't understand. He's got a five-point plan, right? And right. If, you look, if you look at his plan, looking at this morning, right, what he, mm. what he actually said in his speech, and literally, it's everything the Conservative Party is saying that they're going to do. Sort yeah. out the Northern Ireland Protocol, for yeah. example. The issue on a, a freedom of movement, he's not going to change that. And uh, issues around scientists and studying in, mm. uh, in Euro European countries. They're all conservative policies. Yeah. So US Keir Starmer, he's morphed into this, you know, second kind of Boris Johnson kind of figure saying, I'm going to make Brexit work because Boris has failed. Mm. We know the game. Boris, we know exactly Keir Starmer. We know what you're up to. So he is yeah. my nomination of a plan. We're getting back to that kind of territory, aren't we, Daisy, where we, was, we had Blair and Cameron. You couldn't really tell them apart. 
We're going to have the same problem with Boris and uh, Keir Starmer, aren't we? Also, of course, we know that privately, as Richard was saying, he thinks one thing. He is an arch Remainer, and he has every right to be an arch Remainer if that's his yeah. belief. Yeah, but, but he's just now stick with it. But he's now pretending he's not. He also he has not explained why he thought a second referendum was a good idea. Yeah. He's just quietly ignored the fact that that was yeah. his policy, why he brought it in, and his big line out of this speech, which they revealed before the speech. So you know, you know, when when they give the press, yeah. oh, you know, he's going to say this. That's yeah, the yeah. bit they're really excited about. Was this this line about a fat burg of regulations. Yes. Do, you, do you remember that? It was yeah. absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> Ludicrous. Nobody outside London knows what a fat burg is. No. We only get it sort of hammered into us because you see these pictures in the metro or something of, you know, when you're on the tube. Oh, look, there's an underground sewer, it's all covered in fat. Nobody else sees that. No, and it doesn't Nobody make cares. any sense no. as an analogy. No. A fat burg of regulations. But also, I mean, Labour have got uh, fourth, haven't they? Because Corbyn had to pretend that he wanted to stay in, stay in the in Exactly. The in fact, he'd spent most of his career agitated to get They're out of it. They're trying to face so many yeah. ways their heads but are swimming. Corbyn around. was against joining the European Union. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, he's a proper old-fashioned commie. They hate Absolutely. the EU. Absolutely, of course yeah. they He had to pretend he, he liked it because yeah. that was the rest of the party. Of course, Sakira's also upset Sadiq Khan. Uh, who's apparently come out and gone, he's gone completely rogue here because actually he wants London to be part of the European Union because, on its own. Because that's know. what's popular in London. Yeah. yeah. It's just in London, but nationally the picture's completely different, Mike. You know, yeah, most people have voted to leave the European Union. But, but the in problem. London, it's this elite to say, oh, we want to stay in the European yeah. Union. So Sadiq Khan is pushing for that. So th that is why Keir Starmer is my nomination for Plank. I think that's person. a very good one. What's your second one? Right, my second one is what's called the morning round. Oh, yes. So the morning round <laughs> is uh, when Downing Street decides who they want to put out to the morning round of mm. broadcast. So, you know, it's it's yeah. us, it, it's everybody, it's the BBC, it's Sky, and they send out some poor sod with no <laughs> with no body armour on. They tell him or her a bunch of lies yeah. and say, wheel them up, send them off and say, right, yeah. you know, like some sort of sacrificial lamb yeah. to go and spout all the lies that are coming out of Downing Street. So, of course, the last few days, mm. you've had the morning round, which has been a Also, joke. it's hard to keep up, isn't it? Because they keep changing the well, story. They, yeah. and so they, you know, these <laughs> the story does keep changing constantly. <laughs> Every day, it's been the different. story just changes constantly, depending on the role load, doesn't it? Exactly. And so we had Therese Coffey yeah. trying her best at the weekend yeah. to, to speak to journalists when she probably knew whatever was coming out of no. her mouth was a load of rubbish. Uh, we had this man... Her, none of us... her best line was that she hadn't actually spoken to anybody, right? But yeah. she'd been told... <laughs> I know nothing. But she'd been told that, you know, absolutely everything was absolutely yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. But have you spoken to Boris? No, haven't, no. No, haven't spoken And then to him. Um, we were trying to remember his name. What <laughs> was... Will Quince. Will Quince. Nobody's ever heard of him. Junior man. Reminds me of the Owl and the Pussycat. Yeah, yeah. And slices of quince. And slices yeah. of quince. Yeah. So he was he was rolled out. And of course, the, you know, the problem is it's not their fault. No. It's what's going on at Downing Street. Yeah, but it's are the they fact... defending the indefensible? Yes. Let's be honest, you and it, Daisy, because this is what's happening. Because constantly, with you know, all these stories, and no doubt more stories are going to come out, and it's damaging Boris's premiership. Mm. It really is. But yeah. we're going to hear more. And, and they're being rolled out. Say, oh, come on, you've got to defend him. But and how can they? But you can't defend him because you don't know what he said. And that's you don't know what he's going to say next. So you could actually get yourself trapped in a right old bind if you're a minister because you can say one thing today and then tomorrow... He makes you look an idiot. Well, that's exactly what has happened for yeah. us. But, you know, of course, Boris Johnson and Number 10 said he didn't know about these accusations about Chris right. Pincher. Then they said he did know their accusations, but, you know, you're innocent until mm. proven guilty. And then they said, oh, he did know that there had been official investigations. Yeah. And now this civil servant today saying he knew Chris Pincher mm. has lied to us. Boris Johnson is lying. Yeah. Or Downing Street is, is not telling the truth. And it caught in the crosshair of these poor <laughs> ministers being sent out. <laughs> well, the out. latest guy, the latest lab to the slaughter that bloke they wheel out for the emergency questions, who they just did today, yeah. Ellis. I think who it's who Michael they know Ellis, is, is so who's boring. He's a cabinet but... office minister yeah. who's so boring. But he has now moved to position even further, you'll be pleased to know, uh, to now saying that actually, yes, um, it may well be that uh, they knew about the previous investigation. Uh, however, there was no current investigation, so therefore we therefore could get the Therefore, it's job. all fine. So uh, it's actually moved from... Everything's fine. Uh, the yeah. matter is closed, which is the start of it all. Yeah. So now, oh, yeah, well, there was no current investigation. And now the lobby briefing, which has just happened <laughs> this lunchtime, has said, it's has great. moved, has moved huh. it even further and has said, Boris forgot. Yeah. I mean, well, that's OK, He can't then. be expected to remember can't, everything. Can't be expected to remember something really I mean, serious. even his wife complained about this guy back in 2017. In 2017, right? exactly. Well, it's, it's not often I say you should listen to his wife, right? But on this occasion, he should have well, listened to his wife. Well, she wasn't his wife at the time. The, well, well but, you know. you know, not the time, no, I know, I know, but still. Nevertheless. So that's, well, good, that's a good nomination. It is a great one, that, because it moves me very swiftly and nicely on to actually Chris Pincher, because I thought, you know, the trouble with yeah. these stories is sometimes you miss the original plank 
and I agree that... The, the, the core plank. The, the core plank, the man who started it all, Chris Pincher, if for no other reason, right, than he's been called the pound shop Harvey Weinstein, which has got to be one of the worst things you could call anybody. I mean, it's one thing to be like Harvey Weinstein. Yeah. The reason being that he took this Olympic rower uh, back to his room. He tucked his shirt some... in, didn't he? Tucked well, his no. Shirt in, well, I think he tried to tuck his shirt in. He tucked his shirt in. I don't know if he was lifting his shirt out well, or putting it back what, in. I don't know. But, why, uh, why are you touching it with some bloke's shirt? Like? What well, are you doing? clutching at straws. What's I mean, who knows? But he also then disappeared off into a room. He yeah. came out in a bathrobe, yeah. <laughs> which is where he got the Harvey Weinstein thing from. And you just kind of go, what is wrong with you? But you know, what's wrong with you? And he's groping people. Another guy said he groped him in a taxi. And apparently yeah. um, there was... Um, the charity worker who... There was an MP on with Julia today, is it Caroline Noakes, yeah. who said yeah. that she had seen him, I think maybe yesterday, she had seen him just on Tuesday, absolutely um, what can be described as a puzzled, sway-baked, drunk as a skunk, in the House of Commons. Yeah, she said that she, she said this to Tom Newton Dunn um, last night, yeah. Caroline Noakes, Conservative MP, uh, said that Chris, she'd been at a meeting in the House of Commons in the afternoon last Tuesday and Chris Pincher had come in clearly visibly drunk yes. and stinking of alcohol. And Caroline Noakes had reported it mm. to the party. Right. And had done, yeah, as in the Conservative right. Party, and they'd done nothing about well, it. Well, and there's so many other accusations. There was this charity worker who was having his picture mm. taken in his constituency with Chris Pincher, um, standing next to, you know, with, with a sort of a, a slogan for, I think it was a hospice that they were raising money yeah. for. During taking that photo, he's grabbing this <laughs> man's I'm sorry arse. for laughing. No, no, that's, that's, no, but it's, it's a bit like, like, I mean, no, it's like some kind of Mike, Benny Hill episode. It is, yeah, yeah. yeah, it is. But, Mike, the thing is, right, there's no problem with someone being drunk, right? In, if you're in the Carlton Club, you're not working, you're out mm. of work hours, you're in there having a good time, getting... I've got no problem with people being drunk. If that's what they would do, that's their opinion. But when you're groping people, which is inappropriate, without yeah. consent, then yes. obviously there's a massive issue there, isn't it? That's yeah, there is. Of, well, I did say, actually, morality. at the start of all this, if it was women he was doing it to, you're I so think right. he'd have been taken far more seriously, whereas people are kind of sniggering about this, aren't they? No, I, and I think it really is sort of everyday homophobia, uh. the, the, the reaction to this, because one of the things that really shocked me was... Um, Two, the, these two guys at the Carlton Club, uh, who had been groped, by, you know, allegedly, by Chris Pincher, went up, there was a senior, there was a whip there, a female whip, right. and they reported it to her. Mm. And her first question to one of these guys was, are you gay? Now, what the hell is the relevance yeah, of that? Like, you wouldn't say, if it was a, a, a straight man groping a young woman, yeah. you wouldn't say to that young woman, are you a lesbian yeah. or are you straight? Because no. it doesn't make any difference no, to, to, to the offence. No, exactly right. Let's move on. Uh, Who's so, your second so, one? So I'm going to go. I'm going to go for stop the oil protesters. Yes. These these crazy people, right? Idiots. Who are not just gluing themselves to like you know expensive uh, you know gallery mm. you know art and stuff like mm. Van Gogh's and recently this week as well. But but the F1 as well, the races yeah. where they literally got on the track and then glued themselves to the track. I mean, these are fat cars who are going like what was it 200 miles an yeah. hour plus? And also and one they... of them had a terrible crash. Yeah, and exactly. If they'd been anywhere near that. Yeah. They'd be mincemeat. Yeah. Of course they would. I, and I, for me, I mean, it's just ridiculous. No, I'm all for protesting, right? I, I don't like the idea of this new police crime b b bill that they brought out where they can, you know, get rid of certain protesters. I don't like that. I think people should have the right to protest. But there are ways of protesting mm. like that work. And clearly what these guys have stopped the oil protesters, it doesn't work because it doesn't get the public on side. They're like, also, what their are you cause doing? is ludicrous, though, because the world isn't actually going to end in three years, you know? No. And even if we did stop using oil, it wouldn't make any difference. But we can't afford the oil at the minute, so no. we need it. <laughs> so don't yeah. stop it. Like, I know. You know what I mean? It costs us a fortune, yeah. do you know what I mean? It is mad. I mean, just today they've glued themselves to some Da Vinci artwork in the Royal Academy, and they just seem to keep now doing art museums for some so, so, Which, I, I mean, I really don't, I don't approve of their tactics. But equally, you know, we've been talking today about, you know, the, the go slow protests on, yes. on, the, on the motorways, which, of course, have a lot more public support. And the mm. reason they have a lot more public support is because everybody is affected yeah. by the yeah. cost of petrol. Very few people feel the urgency that they feel yeah. with, with climate change. So you can see that there's two different audiences and one is sympathetic mm. and one isn't. But I, I don't approve of people bringing the motorways to a standstill either, because just like we had with the Extinction Rebellion or Insulate Britain, there will be people going to hospital, there will be people trying to Yes, but they're not stopping do... you going, they're just going a bit slower. That's the difference yeah. for me. Very, very slowly. Yeah, but, you know, have you ever been on the M6? I mean, it doesn't go more than about 20 or, miles or an the Or the M42 or the M4. Or the M4. Talk to I M4 mean, I used to go up the, down the, the M4. glass tunnels. I mean, you can't yeah. move, it's like a car park. Yeah. So, you know, it really is slow anyway. You know, I, so I, I, I disagree with you, Daisy. I think they've got... It's a different cause, and I, I support that. But I think that's that. the problem. Are you 
can't pick and choose the causes for which you are going to be OK for protest. You're either OK for people to have free speech and protest everything or nothing, and you want to live in a state that really clamps down on these people and you know, go, well, get, gets a, out you there see, and disbands I have a way them. around that, as you might expect, right? As long as your protest is a moving protest, you can do whatever you like. But as soon as you sit down and stop people from moving, then it's then it's. Uh, so you can illegal. have a, a bunch of snails. So, I, so yeah, as long as you're moving, <laughs> you're, you're, you're people not... can get around you. That's fine. You're but if you're just going to sit in one place, I think that's the problem. But the ones at the art, at that gallery, the art yeah. gallery, they should have just left them there yeah. overnight. Turn the lights off. Goodbye, I'm, I'm ta -da. tempted to say just throw darts at them. But, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I'll kick that's probably happen, not the last recommended. One. <laughs> really, I'm sorry, I'm only joking. Obviously. <laughs> wouldn't recommend violence. Anyway, uh, so, your third. <laughs> so, my third is, we all know, talking of protests, this is now, you know, strike action, we all know the misery that was caused by the last um, railway strikes. However, they did actually get a surprising amount of public support, I think, which, again, people understand cost of living, they understand people saying, you know, that these workers are on low paid. But we're now coming up to a second round of uh, railway mm. strikes. And I was talking about this on my show last night um, with a rail expert who used to be the spokesman for, that, yeah. for, for the railways. Um, and it looks like uh, the three railway unions, including ASLEF, who represent the drivers, yeah. the train drivers, who are very, very well paid, um, are, it looks like they're doing a three-pronged pincer attack mm. and are going to be balloting in the next week or so. Um, and my guest last night was saying that you know, this, the inside track is that they are going to be targeting the Commonwealth Games, which is on July the 28th in, Bir with that. in Birmingham. <laughs> Not I me, Mike, funny enough. I, Mike, have, I, have why. <laughs> I have a problem with that because that's going to bring national embarrassment. This is meant I'm to be sure a showcase. I'm not sure we could be any more embarrassed, can we? <laughs> no. I mean, well, you can... think the Commonwealth Games are going to be a disaster? No, I just think the country is so embarrassed at the moment that I don't think you can get any more embarrassed. So and imagine, the games, imagine I don't if think all these cares athletes can't it, get there, or, you know, well, if, if all the well, people working there can't get there. I mean, it's hopes of London, it's, all, it's, it's going to be slightly different. I mean, I, look, the strikes have happened. You know, we've seen it now not just with the rail, we've seen it with the, you know, the uh, airplanes, you know, we've seen it with all kinds yeah. of different industries. And the thing is, with the, the whole idea of this is, it's, it's slowing our country and stopping our country moving forward, but people are worried about the fact they're not being paid what they think they should deserve to be paid. So have they got a right to strike? But then, well, they'd always have the right to strike. Of course but, they I mean, are. I think Daisy's right. right. They shouldn't. They shouldn't really target specific things like that. And to have to have all three unions means that the railways will be completely ground yeah. to a halt. Um, and and it's but not. Is it just and it's drivers not fair. Or Daisy? Is it just drivers? The, is it just drivers? Well, no, it's, it's all it three. It's drivers. Is, is it well, it, well, it's going to be all then, three. Well, it's well, going to be the whole lot. When the like, RMT went on strike, the, as left said, they weren't going on strike, but they did do selective strikes in different regions. But the fact is, is that if the trains aren't running. The drivers aren't working, so they didn't yeah. need to call the strike, but no. they effectively were striking. But, but this time, that, th this would be the rail operator's worst yeah. nightmare, to have all three go at the same time. And it's not fair, because the railways have to modernise. I'm really sorry, but mm. they do, because if you compare our railways yeah. with, you know, rest rest of with, with the rest, rest of, of Europe, Europe awful, we are awful. And it's yeah. partly because we... The unions have been too strong yeah. and have not agreed to modernise. It's the so same I thing that happened in the newspaper business, whereby every time there was a negotiation of any kind, mm. the owners of the newspapers just caved in and gave them yeah. whatever they wanted because they were not otherwise we're going to stop and we're going to go out and strike. And we've just done, done that now with the rail unions for yeah. so long. They kicked it down the that, can that again and again. Literally, they're now in a pretty good position. And also now we know that there's no other... So there's no spare elasticity of employment. You can't hire yeah. anybody to do anything because there's nobody that you can hire. And, so and, it, and it was interesting last night, this guy saying to me that um, actually the train operators were very pleased when Mick Lynch got um, the head of his union because they thought this is a man they could work with. Yeah. The other two, absolutely not. Right. You know, they, they are much more extreme than Mick Lynch. So I think this strike will be much worse, yeah. much bigger, much more damaging. I, uh, I think they should just shut them all down and say, we'll start well, again. Well, Mick Lynch is like uh, Neil Kinnock... Uh, well, was it Neil Kinnock? Arthur Scargill, number yeah, yeah. two, isn't well, he? he? I mean, he actually He was got on every Scargill. TV programme, right? He got Scargill. He's, on, he's yeah. on TV more than he is in the negotiating <laughs> yeah, table. Was. I've just realised I've forgotten to do my number two before yeah, you I went did, to your yeah. number three, so I'm sorry about that. Uh, my number two is actually the Metropolitan Police. Um, for so many different reasons. I mean, they've been put in special measures. Special measures, yeah. Um, but it was also revealed the other day that there's 22,000 criminals um, who have not appeared in court and have not ever been arrested and taken to court by the police because apparently the police haven't got the time to do that um, or the resources to do yeah. it. This is despite the fact that some of them are rapists, um, some of them are charged with um, dangerous assaults, murderers as well. The Daily Mail yeah. managed to go and find some of these so-called fugitives by going to their houses and knocking on the front door and going, hello, are you so-and-so? Yep. Um, what are you doing? I'm just sitting here watching Netflix. Because they're sitting at home. They're not even on the run. Yes. They don't have to be on the run. 
22,000 people. But, but what's surprising about you? They got time to dress up in rainbow flags, yes. and, you know, no, they're all, to go well, on, actually, on they big, weren't at the Pride March, because even Pride marches. didn't want them anymore. Yeah, they got time to do all that kind of stuff and, and police people's opinions, mm. which we've seen as well, but yet they can't actually police and, and actually, you know, get criminals for do, no. committing crime. No. I mean, the, uh, this is why the general population, the public, lose trust in our police force because they're not doing what they're paid to do, mm. which is to convict criminals of crime, yeah. rather than be on marches and virtue signalling dressed we've had up so in rainbow flags. so many people call in since we've been talking about, you know, there was a story which, which is actually nationwide, something like a million burglaries unsolved, nobody's yep. ever done anything about them. We had one woman call in to say that uh, she reported something stolen at 7.30 in the evening. By 10.30, they'd closed the case. And they rang her to say, oh, we're just telling you we've closed the case. And she went, well, hang on a minute, you haven't even been round. Yeah. And they went, yeah, but we've already looked at it and there's no point, so we've closed it. Well, Three Jane... hours. Three hours. Yeah. Uh, yeah, our colleague James Max was um, saying last night on the talk that mm. he was burgled. I didn't realise poor, poor chap yeah, was yeah. burgled recently. And he said pretty much when they came round, when the police came round to his house for the first time, they told him in that conversation that... Nothing would happen. You know, no, they, we're never going to catch them. We're never going to catch them. Nothing it's will unbelievable. happen. unbelievable. Yeah. Ridiculous. Um, so, no, that's I think that's good, the Met. Yeah. Now, you'll also be pleased to know that we're going to carry somebody over before I come to your final one. Your, your third is, one. Is your favourite uh, man, Mark Drakeford. It's oh. not my third one, no, because this is, this is the extra one that we do. Right. Because Mark Drakeford was in it last week. I can't remember what for. But this week, we're going to put him in for banning people from having second homes or effectively yeah. trying to ban people from having second homes in Wales, suggesting that if you even have a property that you Airbnb out, you're going to have to pay three times the amount of council tax, right? Well, no, it's 300%. 300%. Council tax. That's, well, that's, that, that's well, the that's three times, independent. Yeah, of course we have three, three times. I mean, I'm, I, I'm not, not going to match. I don't know how good your maths I'm from Welsh, Mike. It's, I, 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 it's 300%. That's more than that's about three about, times. Yeah, three times. Yeah. It's three times. 300% <laughs> for heaven's yeah, sake. You've got all right, 3%. Yeah. <laughs> the education system in Wales is not very good. <laughs> yeah, he should, should be putting... The education system in Wales is terrible. <laughs> but isn't he doing got... something else as well? What well, he he's, 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 he wants to in, you, uh, introduce universal basic income, right? Oh, yeah, Which that's is right, giving yeah. those who leave Which care doesn't work. £1,600 a month for that's free. Right. Oh, I think that's why he was in it last yeah, week, Yeah, that's why he was in it last yeah. week, right? So, basically, right. it's just like more reliance on the state again. You don't even go to work, not to find a job. Don't worry, you come out of care, right? Where most of those people... I've been in the care system. I was in foster care myself, so I speak not just anecdotally. Someone's been through that system. Um, that would be in the worst case scenario ever because you've gone through that system coming through a difficult upbringing, which I did. Yeah. You come out of it, and all of a sudden, you're like, ah, don't worry, you don't have to work. Get some money. You're £1,600 a month, just go and do what you want. Yeah. It's absolutely And that ridiculous. is a lot of money for those kids. Well, it's the socialist well. agenda we've seen happening it's in Wales. Well, I find the, the UBI, Universal Basic Income, really, really interesting because when you talk to people about it, very often it's presented as a left wing policy, but actually there, is, there are a lot of right wing politicians who are really keen on it for very different reasons because there are different ways of implementing mm. it. And what the people who I find more convincing... Didn't they do it in Scandinavia somewhere? They, and they've done it in some yeah, American Finland, states. Scandinavia, yeah. Sweden, um, there's quite a few but countries. But if you do it, you've got to do it... It has to, replace, to, it has really. to replace all the other benefits. Yeah. And that's where it becomes clever. Because, of course, if you just add it to all the other myriad of complicated mm. benefits, it doesn't save the state any money at all. Because one of the reasons that the benefit system is so expensive is because it's so complicated. Mm. It takes so many yeah. humans to actually manage it. Yeah. But if you rip all of that up and you say, we are taking away disability benefit, housing benefit, absolutely everything, mm. unemployment benefit, and we are replacing it all with this one benefit that everybody gets. No, and it's not means tested at all, and it's not tested oh. anything else. It does actually um, save the state a huge amount of money, and you you reduce the number of civil servants because it's so simple yeah. to do it, and it actually does does make a difference. But when people like Drakeford do it, they do it as an add-on to all the other benefits, so there is no benefit. Yeah. There's no cost saving no. at all. I'll tell you how to save even more money: you just have no benefits at all. <laughs> and you know, if you want, work. You go to work. Go to work. Go to work. Go to work. That'll do. Uh, so, who's your third? My third is Gary Lineker. Of course. That, he has to be Gary Lineker. Yeah, I mean, he be. is the pinup boy of all virtue signals that just? I've ever known in my Isn't entire life. Yeah. 47 years on this earth, and he really is. I mean, the latest one is where he tweeted out about the uh, Stop the Oil protesters, yeah, yeah. my other nomination, when they'd run on a track and glued himself. And he said, quote in his tweet, you know, when people look back in history, they look upon these people favourably. Yes. I'm like, If it's what? not too late. And the, you're a guy. Said, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Obviously, buying and, and into I know the earth's going to die. Yeah. 
And of course, this Hopefully is a guy. This, this, this is a guy who's driving these big gas guzzlers, you know, right. Jaguars, Range Rovers. No, I know he's changed electric apparently more recently. So he says. So he says, right. but he's been seen, you know, driving other vehicles. But he's also well, going to Qatar, which is one of the biggest well, yeah, oil-producing well, nations in the world. Absolutely. Right? And look is he going to be waving the flag rights. there? Well, he won't. He won't be. He won't be raising the LGBT flag out there. No. Let's be honest. Or wearing a rainbow armband. Or gluing himself to a mosque. No. Absolutely not. So he's Imagine my if you did that. I, I they know. just cut your hand, wouldn't they? I know, they just chuck just them, leave the hand they there. just chuck them off a bridge, <laughs> wouldn't they? Have I ever told you my Gary Lineker story? <laughs> yeah, your hands can stay there. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I told you my Gary no. Lineker story. So when I was 18, and I'm Actually, now 50... you have, yes, in the restaurant. Yeah. And, I'm, and I'm now 50, so you can do, do the maths. I was um, working, I'd just done my A-levels, and I was working um, in a bar near my house. Um, and it was World Cup, whatever, whatever the World Cup 32 years ago was. Yeah. Um, and it was the World Cup where... He had a sore big toe. Do you remember? It was a big yeah. story. It was all about Gary Lillick's so big Italian toe. 90. That was Italian 90. Yeah, that's yeah, right. It would have been Italian yeah. 90. It was all about his toe. So, and he was a regular mm. at this bar. This was in the summer. So, of course, I asked him about his toe. And he was actually very nice. And he, he was very charming. Um, was it a black toe or a white toe at the time? Can you it, remember? Uh, it yeah, was his skin particularly dark? <laughs> yes, exactly. Well, yeah. it was very, it was very well, I mean, it might surprise you to know this, da Daisy, but, I mean, Gary Lineck would be nice to you. You're working in a bar, you're 18, yeah. Yeah. you're blonde, I'm gonna you're quite tell you attractive. What, it, was you a bit, it was a bit nauseating, though, because I said, well, actually, you know, how was your toe? What actually happened? And he was telling me that because the boots are very, very thin and he had this very injured toe, yeah. and every time he kicked the ball, it really, really hurt. So before every game, he'd get an inje a steroid injection under his toenail. Oh! Oh, can Oy. you imagine? Nice. So I did, I did have some sympathy. Mad. Yeah, that's I enough. I I, so I, every I, time I, I, I hope him. it hurt him anyway, but that's... <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, we haven't got a great deal of time, <laughs> so I'm going to rush through. My <laughs> last one is actually Pretty Patel, and not for the oh. same reason as it normally is Pretty Patel. This is for a different reason. This is actually going back to protesting, because I'm in great support, unlike you, of the uh, of the, the slowdown on the motorway yeah. brigade. I'm not even sure who's even organising that. I think it, now, the reason I like it is it's a sort of... I think it's a British version of the gilet jaune. I quite yeah. fancy a summer of, of madness and discontent. You do uh, A bit of rioting. You yeah. want a bit of gilet jaune here? Absolutely. I, I agree. I agree, I think Mike. We need I think it. we should. In this I think country, we need we're it. Too this, we're, we're too, too passive. We're too... Oh, we're British. Yeah. Oh, we're, we got to start being more but aggressive she's, and she's not protesting. She's ordered the police. The police who are also in here for not arresting any proper criminals. She's ordered them to clamp down really hard on these people who are organising the go slow um, and start locking them up. I think it's absolutely incredible. Incredibly sort of tone deaf, as people would say. But if, but if they the people... were climate change activists, I don't think you would be saying No, that. I wanted to lock them up. I do. <laughs> yeah, so you're a yeah. hypocrite. I'm not a hypocrite. Yeah, but, yeah, but they're not no, against... The not at is, all. They're, they're propagating the... Listen, I never said I believed in the ultimate free speech. I like people... Uh, who I like, and I dislike other people. Yeah. I don't say they can't do it, but I don't mind them being no. locked up. Yeah, but the eco-warriors, right, they're pushing this green agenda, yeah. which actually is, is making the cost of living crisis worse. Yeah. So what these other protesters are doing, in effect, what they're saying is, we can't afford to keep the pain they're of food prices. Fighting so for they're the doing it for, they're doing it for hard work in ordinary people, but and you, I agree with that. Oh, but right. you can't have the police arresting people on a subjective opinion but what are they of, them of, for? of their yeah, but of on. their views. But what are they charged with? Driving slowly? Is that the charge? Because well, they're obstructing they're the claiming, highways. Well, they're claiming that there they're, is they're a min endangering... there is a minimum miles yeah, per hour. They're claiming on they're the they're in motorways. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, as I say, if you try driving on a motorway, that's normally the speed you go anyway. You know, they're actually saying to these people, it's more dangerous to drive slowly on a motorway than it is to drive fast. They're saying yeah. you're endangering is... life. And, 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 well, I think you're Mike, endangering life. That is life. literally if in the highway fast. code. It is in the highway code that you cannot. It's also drive in the below. highway code. That you have to give way to cyclists. It's also wrong. <laughs> you know, the highway code is not the bible. You will give start on the highway. No, that is not the bible of motoring. Sorry, I'm not buying that. Anyway, Priti Patel should not be threatening to arrest fine, upstanding, working people of this country. I agree. I agree. Who deserve to be able to afford to buy a litre of petrol? Slippery slope. We're going to lead her to dictatorship if the police are allowed to be opinionated. As far as I've known, dictatorship. Independent Republic. I've always said that. Right now, we have to pick one. So, we haven't got a great deal of time. So, I'm going to ask you to nominate your favourite one out of your three. Right. So, which is your favourite? You've got Just Stop or Gary Lineker or Keir Starmer? I, I've got to go with Gary Lineker. I think that's a very I've wise choice. OK, so we'll put that red one on there. So, you choose your best one. OK Magazine. OK Magazine. Unusual. And I'm going to go... It's got to be Chris Pincher, hasn't it? Yeah. It's got to be. So, um... Those are the three. Chris Pincher, OK Magazine and Gary Lineker. We could have had Halifax Bank in it as well, but we, we haven't got time. I, yeah, I don't know if we missed them out last week. Didn't you? Yeah. yeah. They didn't have them last week. But Halifax Bank, you should definitely get an honorary plan. Yeah, especially Gemma, especially Gemma. Yeah, Gemma, yeah. definitely. Yeah, he, she. <laughs> ho, hum. He, she, him, ho. Ho, ha. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, so, uh, what do you think? 
It's got to be Chris Pincher, hasn't it? Oh, I think it's got, it's got to be Chris Plank Pincher. Plank of the Week. Yeah. Has to be. It's got, got to be Pincher yeah. as well. So yeah. we go, should we do OK Magazine number two just for a change? Yes. Am I relegated to third place? Third place, yeah. You see, but you don't have to see it like that. Gary Lineker, third place. Well, Gary Lineker has been in plenty of times. Well, I know he has. And you'll be helping him to leapfrog up the annual chart. Yeah, okay, yeah. You don't want to give him too much credit. I think if it comes down to a question of morals, that we've got it in, I think, pinch right, first, okay, okay yeah, second. Yeah. If we're talking about moral decrepitude, yes. I think we've hit the nail on Good the head. Good moral point. decrepitude of the week, there you go. <laughs> uh, I told you getting Daisy on it. I mean, it up the IQ <laughs> yeah. of the show. I so, think that's a word oh, I can make up. Thanks, I appreciate that, Mike, thank you, yes. I, well, that's I, why you're here as well. Well, well, well to well, keep actually, the IQ no, low. No, no, you're, no, you're here. No, you're here as part of that programme we've got to promote Wales. You know, <laughs> yeah. you have to have at least one diversity. Welshman. Diversity, well, inclusivity. Yeah, diversity, yeah, yeah, inclusivity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One Welshman every month of Plank of the Week. Anyway, thank you, Daisy. Thank you, <laughs> uh, Richard, very much. Chris Pincher has to be the bottom pincher, uh, Plank of the Week. We'll see you next time. <laughs>